Y'all now ain't the time to be thinking wrong. Amen? Amen? For anybody that's going through a dark moment, stop focusing on the fact that it's dark and huh. spend time searching for the light. This tough, but for some people, you're not going to truly see who God is until you experience some darkness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to prove it. This is tough, but for some people, they won't fully experience who God is until they go through their dark moment. Look at verse 45. Then the sun was what? Darkened. And the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he did what? He breathed his last. Watch this. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God saying, certainly this was a righteous man. The centurion didn't have a revelation about who Jesus was until after he experienced the dark moment. Amen. Some of y'all, me, y'all was struggling in my walk because in my dark moments, I wasn't searching for the light. Come on. I was just fiddling around. When your marriage go bad, you ain't searching for the light. You're just fiddling around. You got the self-help books. When the finances are not in the rain, you're just filling for the light. So we can't get the revelation of the truth because we ain't searching for God. God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you want the truth, you got to search for Christ. Christ is the light. Y'all, yes, the purpose of the dark moment is to usher you into your search for the truth and for the light. The enemies got us just like this. Well, it just happened. You know? How many of y'all ever feel like it's just happening and I can't do nothing about it? Y'all felt like that many times. This just happens to people. Wait a minute, I'm a child of God. God, what are you trying to get my attention on? What are you trying to get me to see, you all? He's always moving on behalf of the people. He's always trying to show you something. But it's your duty and your job to be sensitive to the spirit and accept what he's trying to show you, y'all. There's power in dark moments. Watch this. Mark's account of the story goes a little deeper. Mark 15 and 39 says it like this. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. Let's go a little deeper. This is how the centurion saw Jesus in his darkest moment, right? Let me ask you this question. How do people see you in your dark moment? Uh-huh. You know, when you real pissed off. You know, when they hit you with the, now man of God, and you talk, no, I ain't no man of God. Huh? You know, you know people try to calm me down and put that man of God on you. Now, woman of God, no, no. I want to know how people see you in your dark moments. When your spouse done blew all the money. God, we need to talk. No, you know, <laughs> Give me a checkbook right now. How do people see you in your dark moments? Does God still get the glory? Mm -hmm. Jesus is in his darkest hour, and this man sees Jesus for who he truly is. Who do people see who you truly are in your darkest hour? Listen, not when everything's going good, when everything's going wrong. Huh? Where's your faithfulness when everything's going wrong? It's good to come to church when you got the promotion. When the, when the car's new and it's riding right. I ain't talking about nobody. <laughs> I, I can play with my, I can play with brother, brother Jamal. But y'all ain't it so good when, y'all, you wake up, you check that account, man, money down, groceries in the refrigerator, oh, man. The, everything good, the bills is paid, car ride good, ain't no engine light on. Look, man, I don't know about y'all, but when ain't no engine light on, I, I got a little bit more comfort. I got a little bit more ease. I, I can kick it a little better. But when you wake up on Sunday and that phone vibrating, that's that Chase account alert. You are the Lord. That <laughs> what came through? <laughs> Have you paid that? I said, wait till Friday. <laughs> huh? The car on E. This happening. You ain't feeling right. How, how, how do you respond in your dark hours? 
Because that's when God needs to get the glory the most. When things go right, do you, when things are going right, do you revert back to worldly tactics and ideologies? Oh, I'm going to say it again then. Okay. When things go wrong, do you revert back to worldly tactics and ideologies? Hmm. You know when we're supposed to be walking by the Spirit and all this. But that person pushed that one button because you know you know what everybody like to do. I don't know how you do this. They like to do a thing called lay their religion down. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna lay this. I got people tell me, hold on, bro, all to the side, hold on, all right to the side. Give me all to the side, brother. This is all. This is all who I am. This, I'm a pastor 24 hours, seven days a week. We sons of God 24 hours, seven days a week. How do you get to a point where everything you learned about Christ, you lay it to the side when your flesh is getting some bad news? Come on. How do you get to the point where everything that was working in the supernatural, the moment something don't go right, all that to the side, bro? I ask some people tell me that. Hold on, bro. I know you. Hold on. Look, all that to the side, bro. Let's talk. No, we talk. How do you get to the point where what you know to be true, what you know to be your salvation, what you know to be your deliverance, you lay it to the side? Because everybody that got caught up in showing out in times of convenience. When it gets dark for you, y'all, this is a real question I want to ask you. When it gets dark for you, does that give you a license to give in to your fleshly desires? Huh? You know how, like, you mess up, right? Mm. That, this is how it used to be. Just tell myself. If I mess up, I, I might have a mess up weekend. Ain't no mess up day. <laughs> like, let's, just, let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I mess around and have, you know, have premarital sex. I might as well smoke. Do it. I might as well do everything that weekend. That was me, right? Because now I'm giving my flesh a license to go. Have y'all ever got to the point where things ain't going right? Now I, this is my license to get my wine out and just <laughs> do what I do. Uh, I need some adult time. Come on. Like all to the side. I need. <laughs> uh, y'all know how it is. The devil pulls on those desires, y'all. Listen, I know I'm not alone. The minute things ain't going right, we find these excuses to take down in our Christianity. All of a sudden, our character take a dip. All of a sudden, our integrity take a dip. Just because you broke. So the devil said, oh, let's keep this brother broke. Maybe we can get him to dip all the way down. The devil got a question for you. He want to know, how low can you go? Could you go down low? <laughs> All the way to the floor. That's what you want to know. Listen, how low could you go? Because if that's all it's going to take to get you to go low, then guess what? He's going to keep doing it to you. Oh, and tell me he have an argument with his wife, he get to flirt a little more. Come on, come on, Mary Man. Let's tell him. Let's tell him. Let's tell him. <laughs> he he clapped loud when his wife go. <laughs> you know, you have a two, three little arguments. Now we out here cutting. How you doing? Yeah, you know. Oh, so now you got to take down who you are in Christ? Because you argue with your wife? The devil won't know. How low can you go? Watch this. Everybody want to be deep and spiritual when the sun is shining the brightest on them. But if you want to really see how close a person is to God, watch them in their darkest hour. Listen, y'all. Watch a person when you know they broke. Watch how he prays. When you, with your inside information, know they're going through with their marriage, because they called you last night. I might not be in church. Now people give you that beforehand warning. <laughs> Man, I might not be in church tomorrow. Let's go be in work. <laughs> that's, that's how they do it. That's the cause I get. Hey, Pastor, just let you know I might not be in church tomorrow. <laughs> Why blew fifty dollars? Now you ain't coming to church, huh? <laughs> Pastor, just let you know cake went out last night. I'm like, <laughs> Does that give us a license to sag on our commitment because something went wrong? Come on, y'all. God is calling us to excellence. God is calling us to leadership. God is calling us to set the examples. The world is full of people that then went back on their on their standards. 
Now the world is full of, as long as it look good, just do it. The world is full of, as long as you're happy. Look, let's talk about my own truth, my, you know, my truth that I believe deep down in me. As long as you're happy, do it. The scripture says there's a way that seems right. That's right. That's right. But the end thereof is destruction. Y'all listen, there is never a license. There is never a time for you to sag on your commitment to Christ if you are a child of God. If you are a leader, there is never an opportunity for you to knowingly take down on who you are. Will some stuff hit you or will it happen? Absolutely. But you don't premeditate that stuff. You don't tell God, because this, then I'm going to do this. The enemy knows he's going to always keep you right there. A wise man said it like this. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. In the midst of them crucifying him, Jesus stood right there, humbled and obedient and fully accepting of God's plan. Can you do it like God did? In the midst of them crucifying him and beating him, Jesus stood right there, fully obedient, humbly, humbled and accepting of God's plan. Lord knows I've been through some times where I felt like I was persecuted. Any of y'all ever feel like, oh, they all at me now? You just by show of hands. I, I just need to know I ain't alone. How many of y'all feel like they was all on you? Mm-hmm. You go home, listen. But this one, you know your heart is in the right place. You know, all this, I know I ain't getting nothing. No. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. No, no, no. This one, you know your heart is in the right place. You rehearse that thing over three or four times. God, God, did I miss something? That's a mature person. A mature person will consider where they have error. Right? People that's bullheaded, they just know they ain't done no wrong. Because let me tell you something. I'm Uwapti Bam, okay? This is who I am, and this is what you did. Wait a minute. What about what you... No, 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 no. This is how it is. A mature person will consider themselves. Y'all listen. Signs of immaturity is when people don't even consider their fault in the matter. It couldn't have been you at all. Watch this. Write this point down. A dark place will cause a mature person to focus. It's easy to serve him and stay faithful to him when everybody likes you. But when the darkness comes and people don't like you no more, can you stand? Y'all, can you stand when they don't like you? Oh, brother, so and so can pray. But when God tell you to come against certain things, can you stand? Come on. Even when they don't like you? Can you still pray with that fervency when they don't like you? Can you still love them when they overtake it in the fall? A dark place will cause a mature person to focus. One sign of spiritual maturity, and I'm coming to a close. One sign of spiritual maturity is when we, I'm sorry, spiritual immaturity is when we don't, is what we do when we don't get what we want. I'm going to say that again. One sign of spiritual immaturity is what we do when we don't get what we want. We tell our kids this all the time. You can't get everything you want, Taylor. (laughs) Eat them. You can't get it. Listen, Taylor wants to know why I can't have juice all day. If you give it to me at night and you give it to me in the morning, why can't it just be juice? Right? That's what In her mind, that's what she believes. Me, as a parent, I have to let her know, I can't give you, what's this, y'all? I can't give you too much of this. Because too much of this could be bad for you, even though it tastes good. Now, that's how we are with Christ. God, give us a little taste of something. And now we don't want nothing else but that. I'll give you a little taste of prosperity. That's all you want all day. Give me some more stuff. Give me some more. Give me some more. I'll give you a little house. Give me some more. Give some more. I said, my, my, what is happening? <laughs> it ain't all what you want every day, all day. But a sign of an immature person is what, how they act when they don't get what they want. When the child doesn't get what he wants, he cries, he fall out, and he run away. Some people been in church crying, <laughs> falling out. <laughs> and y'all, some people have just ran away. Come on. You ain't going to do it. I said it. I'm gone. Taylor called and said, walking away on me one day. I said, Taylor, you just had a juice. No. Oh. 
Who you walking away from? Now it's time to 